So not too long ago, I was working on a project that um, needed some switch controls and I didn't want any uh, physical switches on it, kind of dirtying up the surface of it. I wanted everything to be kind of smooth and clean and neat. So I found, from doing a quick search, a um, capacitance touch IC uh, that would allow me to have up to, well, five touch pads, which is perfect because I only needed five functions. And this allows you to just have a copper pad under a piece of plastic or something so you can't see any physical switches and as you pass your finger over it then it will uh, turn on turn on the circuit. So when I first started using it I had several questions and I didn't quite know anything about it so I was doing some searching online and didn't really find anything to help me so I just ordered a few of them and made a, a test circuit and thought I would just post a little video explaining some of the things that I found with it and um, hopefully that if I, any of you decide to use the same um, touch sensor I see that uh, hopefully this video will be helpful and answer some of your questions and help you uh, figure out how to put it into your circuit. So the touch sensor itself, um, I ordered this from DigiKey and it says uh, I see touch sensor, seven key, uh, 14, uh, SOIC 14 pin, SOIC, and see the DigiKey part number. Uh, I'll be showing you the data sheet here in just a few minutes, so we'll see the, the data sheet, the actual pin part number here, but it's um, AT42QT1070SSUCT, uh, and the, that's just the DigiKey part number we ordered. And they come in a, a uh, pack like this. I ordered three of them. Come on. I ordered three of them. So uh, I've got uh, one left. Don't really have a use for it just yet, but who knows. So on the board, uh, you can see the, the IC mounted here. Now, I don't want this to turn into a how-to video. I'm kind of coming into this assuming that you already know how to make a circuit board and you already know how to solder parts. I don't want to do a step-by-step -step on how to solder surface mount components. Um, this is more of an informational video on the actual IC itself, uh, the touch sensor. Um, there are endless videos on YouTube on how to solder parts and how to make circuit boards. So if you need help there, you know, just do a quick search. You can find something there. And you'll notice that this board, uh, it looks like crap. Uh, this is just for testing purposes. It was an old board. Um, some of the copper traces didn't quite turn out very well, so I just kind of had to go over them with solder. This is a double-sided board. Uh, these on the back side really fell apart, and I basically just went over with wire and solder and, and made it work. But for testing purposes, it's perfectly fine. So if we get a closer look at the board here, um, let's look at some of the other components here. The only other supporting circuits that you need, or other supporting components that you need, um, obviously this is the, the IC here. Uh, I have a bank of resistors here. There's, there's four resistors in a bank. I think they're 10 kilo ohm resistors. I could have used four individual resistors, but I wanted to keep this as small as possible. Um, and that was kind of a, a pain in the rear to, to, to solder on there, but I got it to work. So I have three of those. Let's see if I get a closer view of that. Probably not. Eh, this doesn't focus very well. But um, three of those uh, four, four in-line resistors. There's um, five capacitors here. There is one capacitor for each touch uh, switch input. And there's another capacitor, a little tiny one, right here uh, for the power side of it. And like I said, we'll take a look at the data sheet in a few minutes and we'll see in the data sheet where it shows you what value capacitors to use. Now that capacitor was a royal pain in the rear to solder that on. I should have got the same physical size as these others. Uh, not capacitance value size, but physical size of those others because those were easier to solder on. And all I did here was on this side, which is going to be the outputs, I just soldered a, a header pin in here so that I could put that on a breadboard. 
And later on in this video, I'll have another clip of this actually in the breadboard being tested. Uh, so that would just snap into the breadboard and then I would have LEDs on all the outputs. And obviously there's more than five pins here, but two are for power. Um, and then the others are for the, uh, the outputs. Now the inputs for the touch sensors, um, I have five inputs, different wires here, and they just go to this. All I did was I soldered a wire to a piece of uh, brass plate and just glued that. I think I just used super glue to the back of a piece of plastic. And then the other side, I just kind of put a label on it so I could remember which one is which. And um, so again, with it powered up, you just run your finger over each pad and it, it senses the capacitance there between your finger and the pad. You don't even have to physically touch it, just a millimeter or two away and it'll, it'll uh, make the circuit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data sheet. So the data sheet is pretty lengthy. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you. I'm just going to point out a few pages, a few points of interest. I would recommend that uh, you go ahead and read the whole thing because there's quite a few uh, items that, are, that, that uh, might be important for you. So here you can see that you can use this as a uh, comms mode or standalone mode. I just did the standalone mode for my application. In the comms mode, um, it's for uh, I, I squared C, which I'm kind of familiar with, but I've never used, so I'm not um, in any authority to tell you how to, how to do that. Um, not really sure I'm authority to tell you how to do what I'm doing here, but this is some things that I have found with it, hopefully helpful for somebody if you decide to use the to use this as well. So just a couple of things I wanted to point out. Uh, the there's some capacitors in the circuit. There's one for the power supply. Um, gives you the rating there of a 0.1 picofarad. Should be close to your your power wires. Uh, there's four other capacitors and a handful of resistors. Uh, the resistor values, as we can see here, shows that they should be between 4.7 to 20 kilo ohms each. I think on mine I used about a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and that seemed to work perfectly fine. And um, the other capacitors in the circuit, as we see on this page here, says that they should be approximately 1 to 30 picofarads. And honestly, I'm not don't remember exactly what size I used on mine. So here you can see that um, they're only about a dollar each. Uh, usually when I have a project that requires parts, I order a handful of them, even if I only need one or two. You never know if you might fry one or whatever. So I have a few extras. And a dollar thirteen each, that's you know, I can't afford not to buy more than one or two at a time. Usually I get my parts from DigiKey. I know this website's not DigiKey, but they're about the same price either way. So here's the schematic that I redrew in dip trace. On the left, you can see there's a reset pin, which I am not using. And then they have the five outputs. On the far right, we have the five inputs that go into the uh, key pins of the IC. See the power in the very top, and the capacitors and the resistors are all there. And then the board I made is also pictured there. Uh, this was just a, a test board. This wasn't the final, uh, the final circuit board that's going in my project. I just threw this together to, to test it out. I also made sure I used the same other supporting items, the, the same capacitors and the same resistors that I planned on using on the final product, just so I would know that everything would work together the way I wanted it to. And uh, some of these capacitors and resistors are fairly small. Uh, the final product uh, needed to be as small as possible. Here's a close-up view of that uh, circuit board. You can see there's a quarter and another resistor there uh, just used for scale. And um, you'll also notice that the traces on this board look kind of crappy. Uh, when I was making it, I the only board I had left was a piece of circuit board that was, I was probably sitting in my toolbox for 10 years and it was all cruddy, corroded, and I did my best scouring it with scotch Bright and cleaning it up, but uh, it kind of worked. Some of the traces didn't quite make it, so I just 
covered over them with uh, with some solder as best as I could, and um, but it worked. You know, for testing purposes, it worked perfectly fine. And the actual circuit board I used in the in the project was a uh, you know more professionally made board that looks a lot nicer than this. But like I said, for testing purposes, um, I was perfectly happy with with this. So here we see it connected to the breadboard, and as you can see, as I run my finger over the plastic strip that has the brass contacts below it. Uh, you can see it turns each LED on as I pass my finger over each individual tab there. Now I don't actually have to touch it. My finger is probably a few millimeters away from it. And it, I was actually surprised at how well this actually worked. So here's the finished product. Uh, you can see the touch sensor IC kind of right in the middle of the board. It's the smaller, the smaller IC there uh, towards the uh, right the center of the board. Uh, towards the far left of the circuit board, you can see the basic stamp. That's the processor that I chose to take the outputs from the touch sensor. I know um, you're probably wondering why I didn't use an Arduino, because everybody uses Arduino. And Arduinos are fine, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that I have more experience with the basic stamp. And it's what I could, uh, it's what worked, it's what would fit on there. Um, now one thing that might be an issue, uh, depending on your application for the touch sensor, is the fact that once you remove your finger from the, from the pad, uh, the output turns off, uh, which is one question I had when I very first looked into this, because I didn't know if it latched it on or if it just turned off again, and it, it does turn off. And some of the switches on this uh, project, uh, which by the way, at the end of this video, I will post a link uh, to, the, to the project that this was used for. Um, uh, I'm actually using this to control various lights and some other effects on a uh, model, static display model uh, uh, airplane that I, that I made for a client. And some of the touches had to be three position, some had to be two position. So with the basic stamp, you use the button command and you can program that to count how many times you, you touch a button and you can program it to latch it on or, or off or, or whatever. So worked out pretty well for me. For the Arduino, I'm not exactly sure how I'd go about that. I'd have to do some more research on that. I'm sure it's a, it's a simple, it's a simple matter. Um, but anyways, um, hopefully some of this information was helpful for, for some of you. And, uh, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll do my best to, to give you some answers for it. And like I said, check out the other video so you can see the finished product in action of turning on lights and stuff. And uh, until next time, bye.